Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm extremely excited because in today's video, I will be introducing a new bag model that I just got done designing. Well, I designed it and I just finished building it. So this one is going to my friend Jimmy uh, at Trinity Handmade, otherwise known as Nerdin' With Boots on Instagram. I asked him if he would entertain me by letting me try out a new design. And so this is called The Scout. The other bags that I've made up till now, I, I refer to as the Expedition Backpacks. They're over-engineered leather bags. This is in the same spirit, it's just a little bit less intense on the work. For example, my Expedition Packs take about 40 hours to build. This takes about 25 hours. Um, it's just a simpler design. There's several steps that I actually get to bypass. The good news is, is once I get my website, up and running, I'll be able to offer this for a little less than the Expedition Packs. So let's talk about the materials first. So here we have Emerald Gen X leather from Tasman Tannery, purchased through Acadia Leather. And then here we have Harvest leather. This is in a color called Autumn. So it's called Autumn Harvest from Tasman. It's very similar to Brown Chrome Excel. I talked about this in my last backpack video where I made the Overlander bag using the same exact leathers. They're both incredible leathers, top quality, tight grain, neither of which are really used, like well known in the boot community, but I have grown to have a very high reverence for these two leathers. Tasman does a fantastic job with their leather and uh, this Harvest leather, from what I can tell, is their version of Chrome Excel. Similar to how Seidel has a version of Chrome Excel called, that they call Double Shot. This, I believe, is Tasman's version of Chrome Excel. It's got really nice pull up, it's brown. It, it does stretch not as much as Chrome Excel, but it does have those self-healing properties. It's buttery smooth. It's got a lot firmer of a temper though compared to Chrome Excel, so it'll be, you know, probably a little bit more durable, a little bit more rigid, which is nice. A uh, little bit more break-in. What makes this bag design so simple, actually. All right, so this is my expedition pack that I call the Forester. Same leathers, just a different build. Now what makes this bag uh, easier to make is it's actually so they both actually are about the same size they both house the same amount of volume believe it or not the scout looks smaller but it's not actually smaller in a utilitarian purpose so the roll top enclosure here does add length and bulk and material to the bag as well as you can see here we've got several panels to make the body of the expedition pack. We have the front panel, we have the bottom front panel, we have the side panel, the bottom panel, the back bottom, the back panel, and then the left side panel. So that's seven panels in total. The Scout only has three, three body panels. So, so let me show you what I'm talking about here. There's only three, so this front one, this bottom one, and the back, are all one solid piece and then we have a separate side panel on each side and so really this is one long strip of leather which really it eliminates so much work so much sewing so much hole punching it's uh you know aesthetically it's going to be simpler but i think it looks really sharp i think it's sharp having the whole top and bottom you know one whole cut piece of leather yeah as opposed to this this expedition pack there's just so many there's so much going on with it there's so many panels and i did design this to be simple but it's still not very simple that and so that's why it takes so much extra time to build an expedition because there's so many extra panels in the body so i did mess up actually um so so technically i guess you could say we have a fourth panel here and this is the enclosure flap like bob ross says there there are no mistakes only happy accidents that's how i feel about this bag so this top flap here i intended initially for this top flap to also be part of the whole cut body i intended for the front the bottom the back and the enclosure flap to all be one piece the problem was I didn't account for the five extra inches of depth here. And so when, as I was stitching it together, I realized, oh wow, the, the top flap like comes to like here. It wasn't, it wasn't enough, it wasn't sufficient. Obviously I'm gonna have to like take a step back and figure out what I'm gonna do for this top flap. And so I talked to Jimmy and I was like, dude, you know what would be awesome is instead of having the green Gen X top flap, I'll make it two-tone, just like I was planning to do with 
the outer cargo compartment anyways and all the, the accessories I was going to do in this harvest leather anyways. So he was like, yeah, go ahead and do the top flap in the harvest. So that's what I ended up doing. It's double stitched on and then for added support, riveted in using copper rivets. I use all copper rivets on, yeah, all copper hardware except for the, uh, the roller buckles are brass. And then these enclosure straps are a lot thicker compared to the ones on my Expedition pack. These are, I believe, 5 8 inches thick, whereas these are 7 8 inches thick. So a little bit thicker, um, and for that reason I used a larger roller buckle. I believe that's a 7 8 inch uh, raw brass roller buckle as compared to these are 5 8 inch raw brass roller buckles. So the roller buckles on the Expedition are actually smaller. I wanted to give this one a more basic but a more bold design so I kind of wanted to you know not only make it easier to make but you know use use bigger pieces of hardware and so that's what I did with these enclosure straps here so I, I put my same outer cargo compartment as I have done on other of my more recent bags this one is about seven and a half inches wide though whereas on a standard expedition it's more like nine inches wide so this one's just gonna be a little bit more narrow but it's got the same depth and you could probably easily throw in a tablet or something like that in there. It's riveted in with I think eight or nine rivets. So really sturdily, you know, riveted in there. I'm pretty stoked about this design. I want to make one for myself eventually. So we also have for the enclosure straps, I thought it would be cool to do some uh, support components here to sort of hold it into place so that the flaps aren't flapping all around. And so these these support strips just hold the hold the straps in place it, it comes right out though so if you need to for some reason undo that you could fairly easily and then another reason that makes this bag so so much quicker is the fact that there's no lining on on this design now i don't have to line any of my bags but on this one in particular um lining it would actually i think be pretty unnecessary so by skipping the lining, that saves me another 10 hours probably. Whereas in my standard expedition packs, I have this top lip that I typically, as I'm stitching on the top lip here, I stitch on the lining. I'll stitch through the top lip, through the body of the bag, and then through the lining. And uh, in, in this in this particular Forester bag, there is no lining. Lining's not always necessary. If you're using a bag with like a with like a loose temper, then lining will add support and strength to it but in this case again I wanted to make like a bag that had a really bold design but with as few steps as possible and so that's where I came to this so I think this will be wonderful for most all purposes like I said I, I, I plan to make one for myself I think it's I think it's a it's a great simple bold design it's got that same rugged aesthetic that I have been shooting for with my expedition bags which is you know I want it to look like something built the way of the old world the way that people would have built backpacks or bags for millennia for centuries if not millennia this is kind of a funny topic so I, I went and uh, I, I started researching uh, the history of backpacks and believe it or not the information out there is incredibly scant there's like basically no information on the history of backpacks in fact the first known backpack ever discovered was uh, Otzi the caveman found in the in the Alps in Italy I believe he had a backpack or what they believe was something like a backpack remnants of the grass cordage was found in Otzi's backpack however it is unclear how the grass cordage was wrapped around the main wooden frame for this backpack, I simply wrap the grass cordage back and forth along the length of the hazel rod. It is also unclear how Utsi the Iceman carried his backpack. For this backpack, I made two shoulder straps out of a thicker version of the grass fiber cordage. Now that the frame is complete, the final step is to attach the pack that was used to carry items. Again, we don't know exactly how this pack was made or what it looked like, but remnants of fur and leather suggest that it was made from the pelt of an animal. For this backpack, I used the pelt of a beaver. Numerous items that were found near the Iceman's body that at one time may have been carried in his backpack include a copper axe, two birch bark containers, a flint dagger, a net, flint napping tools, pieces of medicinal fungus, and other items. Utsi also carried additional supplies in his quiver. I'm just fascinated by 
how people would have carried things around for decades, if not centuries, if not millennia. When I was in Alaska, I spotted, literally before I started making bags, I spotted a, uh, there was a resort we were staying at and they had this old, I wanna say it was like a bear fur backpack. This thing was incredible. I'll include video footage of that. I wanted to, I, I was so intrigued by it. I think it was from the early 1900s from like mountaineering days and uh, it just looked like the coolest thing. I love taking a raw material like a leather and building a backpack out of it. I don't know why I'm so in love with the idea, but but there's other people out there that, you know, they see this and they're like, oh, could you make me one? And so that's why I wanna really like ramp up my production, get a website going and things like that. But yeah, long story short, I don't know that there's much history to backpacks, but I want, I, it's like I know it when I see it sort of a thing. This design to me harkens back to something old world and that's what I was trying to achieve ultimately. Full disclosure, I actually planned to not do my tension relief strap system on this one. I wanted to try out a new simpler strap design, but uh, Jimmy asked me if I was gonna throw in the tension distribution strap system. So I, I went ahead and I installed it on this one. I think when I build mine though, I'm gonna do like simpler straps. It's gonna be more like I think the straps, I'm just gonna rivet them in fairly simply. Now I know that my whole idea for doing the expedition was to have this tension relief strap system, which is my favorite system. I absolutely am in love with this system. To make a simpler version, I'm wondering if I can make a simpler strap as well. This is a simpler bag design. I'm, I'm thinking I could make a simpler strap system as well. So if that's the case, then I could offer, you know, like this design will be less expensive than the ex in comparison to the expedition with that the simpler strap system when, whenever i end up designing it will also be a little cheaper but yeah one cool thing and i always like to incorporate marks from the tannery again we have this stamp this is a it's like a number it, it says 106602 right here and uh i think that's so cool I, I think what that is is i don't think that's a brand that you know, like happened during the cow's life. What I think happened with this is, I think that's how the tannery sort of marks the sides as they're gonna be processed. So I'm, I'm guessing that that 106602 probably stands for, you know, this is gonna be a harvest leather, you know, the tannage, the color, it probably indicates the color in there and stuff too, but it's probably just the tannery's way of sort of like, hey, this entire side, it's going into that vat you know, not that vat over there. So if anybody knows more specifically, please let me know in the comments because I'm not sure. That's my assumption is that that's something that the tannery would stamp into the leather to sort of mark like, okay, th this side, you know, these 10 sides are going into that vat to become harvest or these 10 sides are going into that vat to become, you know, Gen X or, you know, whatever. The enclosure straps are double, double riveted in with real thick brass rivets. What do you guys think about this new design? I'm quite excited about it. I sat down and I sketched out, for me the creative process is so much fun, like sitting down sketching out a new design. And uh, this one just came to me. What originally inspired it was my outer cargo compartments. That's essentially what this bag is. It's just a larger version of it. That's what gave me the idea is like these outer cargo compartments were were coming together so well for me and were, were working so well for me. So I said, what if I made a big bag out of it? And uh, sure enough, it came together pretty well in my opinion. Leave me your thoughts on this bag in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm on Instagram, you can follow me there and track my bag making journey as it unfolds. My username is LV. and anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see y'all in my next video.